the sandals of peace. I heard once a story about two girls in middle school. One was uh, Beth Ann and the other one was Lily Ruth. They were all, they were both friends and they had been friends since kindergarten. One day, Beth Ann heard through other kids in school that Lily Ruth wanted to fight her, that she wanted to beat her up. And Beth Ann was very perturbed. She was disturbed that her friend for so many years without any type of problems or any type of argument, they were kids and they had no disagreement one day Lily Ruth wanted to fight her. She wanted to ridicule her in front of all her classmates. And she was dreading going to school. She was dreading going down the stairs. And as she was leaving school one day, she heard the commotion of the kids. They were screaming and laughing and there was no other way out except down the stairs of these particular stairs. And as she walked down the stairs, she opened the door and there was Lily Ruth waiting to fight her. And the only thing Beth Ann could do was prepare herself for flight, fight or flight. She started running and she went home and she felt defeated. She felt like a failure. She felt like a coward. And the next day, the same thing happened. Until the third day, her grandmother sat her down and said, Beth Ann, you need to know how to fight. You don't start a fight, but you need to know how to fight and how to defend yourself. You don't have any brothers or sisters, and you need to learn how to do this because I cannot go to school and be there for you all the time. And I am your grandmother. I may not be around for you forever. And so today you come home and I want you to come home as a victor. I want you to come home with your head held high and you come home in victory because you faced Lily Ruth, you faced her and um, you fought her. You're going to use wisdom and you're going to face her and you're going to have to fight her because Bethan, she will be waiting for you every day of your life. And Bethan did just that. She woke up in the morning on the third day and she was ready. She took her pigtails and she wrapped them. She placed them with bobby pins and she got herself ready so that this girl couldn't pull her hair and she got herself ready well she walked down those stairs those stairs that were the the flight of stairs that were leading to her death that's how she felt and she faced lily ruth and before lily ruth had a chance to pick up her hands to hit Beth Ann, Beth Ann hit her. She knocked her on the floor. She didn't stomp on her. She didn't pull her hair. It was just one punch and she was out for the count. And that day, Beth Ann went home. Instead of going, running back home, she went home walking with her head held high because she was able to defend herself. And the other girl, Lily Ruth, ran home and every, all of her schoolmates were laughing at her. So Beth Ann was able to save face. She was able to go home and face her grandmother. And the story goes that Beth Ann said that she would rather face her friend and, and punch her then face her grandmother because her grandmother was much more of a disciplinarian. <laughs> so this story goes to tell you that the reason why I use this story in this devotional is because we need to learn how to fight. 
we should never start a fight, but we have weapons in our arsenal. The weapons of our warfare are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. And the Bible says that our feet are fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And in Ephesians 6, you will read in Ephesians 6, 10, you will read about the whole armor of God. There are different components to the armor. And we're going to speak about each one of these components. Today, we're going to speak about the gospel of peace and the readiness of the gospel, the feet shotted for the gospel. Therefore, we put on sandals of peace. Footwear varies from flip-flops to complex shoes or boots. Shoes may have high heels or low heels. There are different types of shoes. There's many different types of women's style of shoes. There are different materials for shoes. But when we cover our feet, we are protecting them from dangerous items such as nails or sharp rocks. Sharp rocks. We also get better traction on slippery surfaces. Shoes are barriers to the elements, to the heat, to the cold, the rain and the snow. And also shoes make us look kind of nice. Shoes can be dressy with plenty of bling or plain or unnoticeable. They come in every color under the sun. But the shoes of a soldier are totally different. Soldiers must have sturdy, strong, durable shoes to stand on unstable ground and shaky ground. They must run or march all over all kinds of terrains from asphalt to desert sands from swampy marshland to thick and tangled jungles soldiers must always be ready to move out quickly and the right foot gear can make or break a battle or campaign and paul talks about the right foot gear for soldiers in ephesians 6 15 having shod your feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace this means being ready to go and win Warriors must go on the defense and also defend their positions. This preparedness takes training. Every soldier needs to toughen up enough to match the stamina of the others once their training is complete. And uh, King David, he had to go in front of Goliath. He, King David couldn't go in front of Goliath and try to preach the gospel to, this, to a giant. He was taunting him, he was bullying him, just like Lily Ruth was doing to Beth Ann. There are times when you cannot go in front of your adversary, in front of your enemy, and try to preach the gospel and go with the good news. No, the good news, you carry it in your heart and you ask God to cover you and you ask God to go with you as you defend yourself in with this enemy that you have in front of you. And thank God that later we're going to talk about what Jesus does for us. But in the meantime, Paul talks about that we need to defend ourselves and we need to toughen up and we need to know how to fight with what weapons. Just as the soldiers in the army are prepared, we too must be prepared as members of the army of the Lord. We must be ready and able at all times to defend our position in the Lord, to stand up for right, to fight the good fight of faith in a wicked and perverse world. When our feet are shod with the knowledge of the gospel of peace, we are ready to tell the world about Jesus and his love for us. We'll go anywhere to spread the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Satan wants us to believe that we're wasting time when we tell other people about Jesus. When Jesus sent out 72 disciples in ministry, he said, he who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. When these disciples returned with joy from their ministries, they reported, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Then Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. 
However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 16 through 18. As soldiers in the army of the Lord, we are called and motivated to share the true peace available through Jesus Christ. Yes, definitely. Try to preach the gospel first. But if you have a bully that wants to taunt you, that is ridiculing you, that is humiliating you, especially in the schools, especially with young kids, this is happening more and more, more and more each day. And kids have to, they, they, nowadays, they carry guns, they carry knives, they carry tools and weapons in order to defend themselves. But sometimes we have to teach our kids how to fight. And it just takes one punch to bring down your enemy and he, you'll never have to fight him again in the name of Jesus. And um, the Bible, the Bible is the inherent word of God. And it contains all truth. Uh, in t uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, it says, Be diligent to prepare yourself, to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That is 2 Timothy 2.15. So never be ashamed of bearing witness to our Lord. Accept your share of hardship that faithfulness to the gospel entails and the strength that God gives you. For he has saved us from all the evil and called us to a life of holiness. Not because of any of our achievements or because we're cute, but because he called us before the beginning of time. He planned to give us Jesus Christ, the grace to achieve his purposes and the purposes over our lives. Remember always as the center of everything, Jesus Christ, a descendant of J David, yet raised by God from the dead, according to the gospel. For preaching this, I am having to endure being chained in prison as if I were some kind of criminal, but they cannot chain the word of God. And I endure all things for the sake of those whom God is calling. Jesus Christ. Remember how from early childhood your mind had been has been familiar with Holy Scriptures. Well, sometimes there are people that have never heard the Scriptures like I never heard the Scriptures. And I was, I never, I never knew anything about God. My family practiced satanic religions like Santeria, and I never knew anything about God or how to defend myself or what or use the tools that God has given us, which is the praise and the worship, the uh, the clamping, the clapping, the stomping, the declaring of the word, the using the word as a weapon and as a tool. And uh, I never really learned how to do that. So when I came to Christ, I learned I could I could not get enough of the Word of God. I couldn't get enough. I've always been a peacemaker. I've always been a peacemaker, and I I was always terrified of fighting. I don't like to fight. I don't like to be confrontational whatsoever. Um, I believe that uh, talking people can actually understand each other, but there are people that don't. You can't talk to them. There are people that do not accept any type of any type of negotiations, any type of peace, anything that might be considered something else other than what they are believing in. And sometimes there are bullies and there are monsters and there are giants on our path. And we need to know how to defend ourselves. And the way to defend yourself is by praying to the Lord, praying to God that he will give you wisdom in all situations to face this giant, this monster, this bully. And you have the, 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 um, you have the blood of Christ already. You have the, the, uh, the tools that God has given you. You have the Holy Spirit that already resides in you and you put on the armor every single day. And today, as we learned about the sandals of peace, we put on the sandals of peace always. We are peacemakers, not troublemakers. We carry the sandals of peace and the gospel on our feet, but there are times when we need to fight. There are times when we need to ask the Lord to help us fight. And yet again, the Lord 
Jesus Christ tells us to stand still in other situations that he will fight the battles for us. So we need to know when to stand still and when to take the first step into the uh, battleground. So let us pray. Father God, thank you, my God. Thank you that shoes, my Father, are also for dancing. Shoes are also for rejoicing. Shoes are also for dancing of joy when the victory and the battles are won. My God, Heavenly Father, you teach us so much, my God. You teach us your ways. You teach us the truth, the way, and the life. You teach us to be peacemakers first, God. You teach us to always and above all things, my God, be peacemakers and not troublemakers. But you also say that, my God, that we need to use wisdom. We, you also say that we, that there are times when we need to fight. And in those times we beseech you, we require of you, we require of you in every situation, but we ask you, Lord God, you know every person listening to this audio, you know every person going through a trial, a tribulation, a challenge, going through some kind of a circumstance, my Father, in their lives where they might, might have to put on the armor of God, Lord, and go out and fight, my God. And I pray that you put a hedge and wall of protection around us and around the children of the world as they go to school, my God, that you, my God, will shield them and protect them, Lord God, that you will speak to the parents' hearts, the, God, the parents will be able to, to see when their children are depressed, my Father, that the parents will be able to have eyes to see and ears to hear and notice when their child is going through a trial at school, my God, when there is a bully God, when there is an enemy, Father God, trying to take them down. I just pray, oh God, for your strength and your mercy. I just pray for your peace over every situation that we may face, my God, and over the children of this world, our children, God, the, the generation of the future, Lord God. Help the children, my Father, in school, my God face and navigate all of the different problems that they face today. And we just give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Abba Father. We thank you, Jesus. Father, in your son's name we pray. Amen. If you like this message, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, also like and share. If you know of anyone that needs to hear a message like this. Maybe they're depressed, maybe they're anxious or fearful, maybe they're struggling with a situation in their lives. Send them a gift today, the gift of hope, the gift of encouragement. Thank you for listening to my messages. Have a blessed day.